Hello gentlemen, welcome to section 2.5 called Line Spectra and Electron Jumps. Now today we mention a guy named Niels Bohr. Niels Bohr was a Danish physicist who created the Bohr model of the atom. This model proposed that electrons travel around the nucleus in what we call orbits. Now it says that if our nucleus is here, we have outside the electron cloud and those electrons are found in orbits. Now, each orbit has a defined amount of energy. He said that energy increased as you got further from the nucleus. So as you got further out, energy increased. He suggested that electrons can jump between energy levels or orbits, meaning they can go from energy level 1 to energy level 2, energy level 3, etc. These jumps were in a quantum fashion, meaning they were in a specific increments or in specific increments of energy. So you couldn't go from one energy level 1 to energy level 1.5. You had to go from energy level 1, energy level 2, or 2 to 3, etc. Because they were very specific increments of energy. Quantum fashion, Niels Bohr was the godfather of quantum physics. Now, electrons cannot exist between levels. Just said that. But just want to reiterate that. Electrons are most stable at lower energy levels, closer to the nucleus. This is another thing suggested by Niels Bohr that when things increased, when electrons went to higher energy levels, they were unstable, they had to come back down to a lower energy level or a lower energy state. And we've seen that before. We saw it today in our investigation, and we've talked about it in the past as well. So in our investigation today, we looked at the hydrogen light emission spectrum. A sample of hydrogen was illuminated with high voltage, and we saw colors through a spectroscope. So let's talk about the science behind that. So initially some background information is that hydrogen has one electron. At the ground state the electron is in energy level number one right outside the nucleus here. As I apply high voltage to this hydrogen gas this electron absorbs the energy and reaches the excited state. Now this excited state is a little more complex than what we talked about before. This electron can jump from energy level 1 to energy level 2 and energy level 1 to 3, energy level 1 to 4, energy level 1 to 5, energy level 1 to 6, etc. It can make multiple jumps. It can go up and down, up and down, up and down to higher points. But as Niels Bohr, as Niels Bohr, Niels Bohr excuse me, said, at the excited state is unstable. Lower energy levels are more stable, so this energy will be released. When this energy is released, we have to talk about it in a different way than we have before. Now bear with me. I'll take a snapshot of this and blow it up so you guys can see it um, a little more clearly on and I'll post it to Canvas. So when these electrons come back down to a lower energy level, they're going to release the energy. When they release this energy that they initially absorbed, Depending on how much energy they release, it's going to be associated with a different type of light. The first is infrared light. When electrons go from energy level 6, they're labeled here 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, down to energy level 3, or from 5 to 3, or from 4 to 3, that energy associated with that um, in electron jump downward is infrared light. We call this the passion series. When Electrons jump from energy level 6 all the way to energy level 1. That's a huge jump, a massive jump. When that happens, from energy level 6 to 1, or 5 to 1, or 4 to 1, or 3 to 1, or 2 to 1, when that happens, we call that ultraviolet light, or the energy associated from that release of energy. That light associated with that initial uh, release of energy is called ultraviolet light. We call it the Lyman series. And the one that we're focusing on mostly for this course is this next one. When the electron jumps from energy level 6 down to 2, or 5 to 2, or 4 to 2, or 3 to 2, the energy that's associated with that jump is going to reveal itself in, in the form of visible light. We call that the Balmer series. So each jump down to energy level 2 corresponds to a different color of light. We saw four different colors of light through our spectroscope, and we have one, two, three, four different energy jumps. 
Now, these different parts of light, infrared light, visible light, ultraviolet light, are, are, are part of a bigger spectrum of light. We call that the electromagnetic spectrum. This is a continuum of these different types of waves that we've seen and we've talked about before. And you've heard about these before, I'm sure. We have gamma rays, x-rays, UV rays, visible light, which most of our focus will be on, infrared rays, radar, and radio waves. Now, <clears throat> we're mostly going to focus on visible light. For visible light, we know that there is, it consists of different colors that we can see. Red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet. You might remember that as Roy G. Biv. Now, these are waves, gamma waves, X-rays, you'll hear rays and waves interchange, interchanged uh, periodically through the course. You might even hear particles in there. Um, so I'll say waves now because we know what waves are. Uh, waves have a certain length. Those who took active physics know something about wavelength. Wavelength is the distance, if we think about a wave, the distance from the top of the wave here to the top of the wave there, we call this a crest and that a crest. So crest to crest equals one wavelength. Wavelength is measured in meters. And the same with trough to trough, that would be one wavelength. Now, as wavelength increases from gamma to radio waves, we have a change in something else called the frequency. So if you didn't take anything away from that, take away this. Gamma, wave, gamma waves or gamma rays have a smaller wavelength than radio waves. So as we go through violet to red, our wavelength increases. This is going to affect our frequency. Our frequency is the number of wavelengths that pass per second and it's measured in hertz, hz. So how many of these crest to crest pass a certain point per second? That is the frequency. These are related, wavelength and frequency are related through the speed of the wave. So all those waves I just showed you before, gamma, wave, gamma rays all the way through radio waves, they all travel at the same speed. So the speed of all electromagnetic waves is constant. That number is 3.00 or 3 times 10 to the 8th meters per second. This is known as the speed of light. Now, the relationship between wavelength and frequency and the speed of light can be governed by this equation here. The speed of light is equal to the wavelength, this little symbol here, lambda, times the frequency, this symbol here, f. So c is the speed of light, lambda is the wavelength, f is the frequency. Now, in order to mathematically account for the unchanging speed of light, we have to think about the relationship between wavelength and frequency. As wavelength increases, frequency decreases. In order for this number to stay constant, think mathematically, if wavelength goes up, frequency has to go down in order to keep this at the 3 times 10 to the, 10 to the positive 8th power meters per second. So in order to keep this constant, these have to vary indirectly and proportionally. So we call that, or inversely and proportionally, excuse me, so the wavelength and the frequency are inversely proportional to one another. As one increases, the other must decrease in order to keep the speed of light, or the speed of all waves, constant. Electromagnetic waves, constant. Now, another point. Light is packaged for us to see as photons. So all the light that we've seen, those are photons coming to us. Photons are just specific packets, or quanta, plural for quantum, packets of energy. This energy can be calculated by an equation given by Max Planck. We're talking about, you know, these wavelength, these colors of light, excuse me, that we're seeing corresponding to different energies. Well, we can calculate that energy for a specific color of light using this equation here. E equals H times F. Energy associated with the wave is equal to H, which is Planck's constant, times F, which is the frequency. E is the energy released. F is the frequency. H is Planck's constant. 
which is this number here, 6.63 times 10 to the negative 34th joules times seconds. And it will always be that. We will use both of these equations in class, so please take note of them. And if you want to find a sample problem, please do so to become acquainted before we get to class. Gentlemen, take notes. Adios.